Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worms. It's so good to have you all with us this morning. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Phil. I'm the lead minister here. And my name is Sarah. I'm just a member of the congregation. Not just a member. You're Aww. a valid, loved, cared for member of the congregation. Absolutely. Feeling the love. And welcome to you online as well this morning, wherever you may be in the world. We might have people watching all over the world. Who do you knows? know what we sometimes do? Genuinely, we do. We have Caleb's dad in India, and we have our friends in Canada who occasionally watch us. So we have an international is, ministry. An international, that's what I'm calling it. That is it. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, we, we, completely. We, um, wow, this has gone rogue. <laughs> uh, it's so good to have you with us this morning. Special welcome for those of you who are maybe with us for the first time today. It's great that you're here, um, and we really hope and pray that you can find a home here at Worbs. Now, this morning, we are kicking off our new sermon series, and we have the wonderful Gav Murray um, helping us um, as we jump into the book of Genesis for the next seven weeks. Gav's not preaching every week. He's just kicking us off this morning. So um, uh, that's our new sermon series starting today. Start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. <laughs> that sounds like... Anyway, let's move on. It probably is, isn't it? Right. Um, we're here to meet Jesus. We are. That's what we're going to do. Thank you for that prompt. So, if you're willing and able, can I invite you to stand? Um... Uh, you, you may have come for all sorts of different reasons this morning. You may have been battling kids and getting out into the cold and getting here and all those other things. And if you take nothing else from this morning, can I just remind you that you are loved. You are loved. And the person who loves you, we get now to worship him this morning. So that's what we're going to do. We love because he first loved us. And so we're going to lift our hearts, we're going to lift our voices, we're going to praise him. And we're going to do that this morning with actions as well. And so if you are young or young at heart and you want to engage, use your bodies to worship, we're going to do that this morning as well. So Sarah, would you like to pray? Absolutely. And then we will jump straight Absolutely. in. Absolutely. We praise you and we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we have the privilege of being able to meet together online or in person here just to glorify and magnify your name. Lord, today is about you and we pray and we invite you and your Holy Spirit to be here with us and around us. We pray that you would speak to us, Lord. Tell us what we need to hear this morning. Give us our daily bread. We pray, Lord God, that you would work through us and use us, Lord Jesus. We pray that today would be accessible for all people. Lord, that all are welcome into your home, into your family. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just rest and work and be amongst us now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So let's worship. Children of God, family, joining together as one. Here we come, ready to sing who you are. God is good. God is good to us. All the time, every hour, every
that you are good. Lord, we're going to be learning about creation and how you are good. What you made is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are good. At the very center of you is goodness and love. Thank you, Lord.
I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that it is all about you this morning. It is about you, Lord. And um, now is the time for our children to go to their respective groups um, for their praise and worship. Um, so let me see if I can get this right. We have embers up here, which is our, pre, uh, our crash, our parent-led crash. Um, our preschoolers uh, meet in um, Sparks, which are over up the stairs and to this side. Then we have our key stage one, uh, which is flames, which meet up these stairs up here and then we have blaze which is our key stage two um, they meet at the back and then go to Werb central which is our building just along the street here um, so if you have a child if it's your first time if you're coming with somebody and you're new today um, please just ask anybody with the w kids colorful t-shirts on um, and, and and they can help you um, if you're youth, please stay here. If you've got a child that's in secondary school, we have a youth group that will be starting. They're staying for a few more songs and then they will be leaving shortly for Web Central. But let us pray for our children um, as, they, as, as they go, that they would meet with God. Lord, we thank you for our children within our community. We thank you from the very youngest babies to these adolescent teenagers we've got in our midst. We pray, Lord, that you would meet with them. We pray that your love, that they would know your love, that they would know your message, that they would know you, that they would come to know you as their creator, as their God, as their salvation, as their hope, as their love, as their joy. Lord, we pray that you would meet with each and every one of our precious children. Um, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Met Office tell us that... Uh... Storm Isha is on its way. And we need to be prepared and batten down the hatches. But I wonder if you are going through storms of life right now. Maybe you just need to reaffirm your foundation in Christ. This next song is all about that, about putting our firm foundation in Christ. And I pray that that will be true for each one of us here this morning. got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense, so I won't be going on. I'm not held by my own strength, cause I've built my life on Jesus. He's never
worship you. Yes, we worship you. Yes, we worship you. distances, how long it takes light to travel, it's just absolutely mind-boggling. God made us, and He knows each one of our situations, and He just calls us, calls us deep into Him, calls us to have that open relationship with Him to chat to him, just to tell him about your day, but also to recognize that he is the creator of the universe, that he is all-powerful, he's all-knowing, but he's all-loving as well. That is the God that we worship. That is the God that wants to reach into your lives this morning. That is the God that wants to take us on a journey, and not just bumping along the bottom, but actually going deeper with Him. Because then we begin to see the kingdom of God opening up. Then we begin to see our prayers being answered as we walk in righteousness. It's not just being a goody-goody. It's just allowing God to build our faith begin to hold our heads up high and begin to not be feeling downcast, feeling like we're worth nothing. God wants to put value on your life. He has put value on your life by the death of Jesus Christ. And He wants you to grow. He wants you to love Him more. He wants to go deeper with Him. a community that God is building in us. He's building the real thing. That's Church arise, 
build your church we can't make your kingdom come but that's what you do thank you Lord that it is your name alone 
your name alone that we put our trust in. something beautiful for your church, something beautiful for the world. Let the world see that you haven't forgotten us, but you are very much involved with our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you are love. And we know that because your sacrifice came to invade our world but only if we let you take us on a journey take us deeper into you Lord let us go deeper with you let us be something beautiful for you Beautiful name it is, the name. 
there is power. There is power in your name, Lord. There is power. There is all the power that we need for life, for godliness. You, you give us everything. Thank you, Lord. Lord, it says in your Psalms, in my distress, I prayed to the Lord and the Lord answered me and the Lord set me free. Lord, there is power for freedom here this morning. Whether you're here in the building, whether you're online at home, wherever you are, there is power in your name. You didn't just create us. You gave us everything we need for this life. We can call to you and you can set us free. You can set us free from the chains that surround us, whatever they may be, free from our own mental health, free from our own self-doubt and self-criticism, free from physical pain, illness and ailments, free from things that are around us that are out of our control, free from the things that society place on us, free from the, the addictions of social media, of, of, of the, the, the strains that this world give, free from financial worries, free from problems with debt, free from problems with society. Lord, you, you set us free and all we need is to call on your name. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that privilege this morning. Just come in your power. And Lord, we pray that not just for us here, but we pray it for our city. Lord, for a city um, struggling with debt and poverty, a city struggling with addictions and broken relationships. Lord, we are asking that you come and transform our city. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. We pray for the peace and prosperity of Derby, and we are asking for you to move to move amongst us, to change hearts and minds, to set people free. And Lord, we want to continue to pray for our world, a world in which, um, well, we know it's broken, Lord, and uh, we are desperate to see change. This morning, Lord, I want to pray specifically for an end to the violence that we are seeing going on around the world and in particular an end to the escalation. Lord, different, we know that the Middle East is unstable and things keep ramping up, problems not just Israel and Gaza but in Yemen and then we're Pakistan and Iran and it just keeps building. And so Lord, we are praying for no more, that you will bring peace and change in our world. And in all the conflicts around the world, come and end them and restore peace and freedom and hope, we pray. So Lord, we thank you for hearing our cry. We thank you that we can trust you with all of these things. So we ask them in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. Do please take a seat. But take them where? Take them where? Take them where? Just whether. Anyway, right. Um, change of gear. We're going to tell you a few things that are going on in the life of Werbs at this point. And um, as a church, we kind of have this vision uh, that actually things are done better when we meet and gather over a meal. And so we would love to invite you, um, if you are new to church, new to Werbs, to come to dinner at my house this week uh, for two weeks Wednesday night this week Wednesday night next week new to words if you want to find out a little bit more about the journey that we've been on since we started six and a half years ago and all that God's been doing amongst us as we've planted two other churches in that time and you want to see hear all about that and where you can play your part and connect in with it we'd love to invite you to new to web so um, do sign up online just so we know if you're coming and dietary requirements and all those type of things but we'd love to invite you to ours for dinner and to play um, to hear about all of those things Brilliant. I have the privilege of talking to you about Alpha. Now, Alpha is for everyone, okay? I've been in church since I was a little, little knee high to a grasshopper, and I did Alpha last year, and it refreshed, it refreshed me. It was a wonderful space. Alpha is a place that you can come, meet with other people. You can come if you are not 
anything to do with church, but if you just want to think about some of the life's big questions, and um, you watch a very short video um, that is a, on like a different theme each week, and then there's time for discussion and a chance for debate. I love a critical debate, it's the lecturer in me. Um, and yeah, but it is, it's not a place where you're going to get told what's right or wrong. It is a place where you can just come and be yourself and think. Time to think in this world is a very precious thing. So please do spread the word. Alpha is here. And if you think that it's been maybe a few years since you've done it, or you know, you've got a few of those life's big question things going around in your head, come, even if you know, you've been in church for a while. And come if you haven't. Just come. It's fab. It is fab. And there's more food there. Right, there's, so there's new to food. words, there's food. Come to Alpha, there's food. Um, there's, there's, a, food. there's a theme going on. Yeah. So Alpha starts Tuesday the 30th of January. Okay, so it's a week on Tuesday. But do not fear if you're not able to make that date. I'm sure we would have you. Absolutely. In future weeks. So that's uh, new to Webs and Alpha. And then the other thing that we'd love to say, explain what's going on is we've stu- we are starting this week a brand new thing called Webs Collective. It is for anyone aged 18 to 25, and we want to invite you to come and be part of it. I'm really excited about this. We're kind of building on our student ministry that we've been doing for a number of years, but we realize that there are people here who aren't students, but in that age bracket, or people who've left university and are um, young graduates and all of that type of stuff. So we want to invite you to come and be part of that. Seven o'clock this way, uh, Tuesday, new to uh, Werbs Collective, just down the road at our Werbs Central building. If you are not in that age bracket, and I'm on, if I'm honest with you, I'm looking out across the room. Not many of you are. I say that in love. I include myself in it. Hi, Josh. There's a few of you. But if you're not in that age bracket, can we please be praying for those guys in that age bracket as they start to form and build new community together um, and we see what God might do in and amongst them? Maybe they're all the ones that are watching us online because they're very cool and live online. They do. Digital world. Digital world. Um, So we're going to move on to the best part of the service, arguably, which is giving, which is, which is the act of giving. I thought giving. you were going to say the break. Okay, <laughs> carry on. Um, you know, it is a privilege to be, to be able to serve God, to be able to, um, and giving is one of the ways as a church community that we can do that. It talks in the scriptures about giving um, and, and sowing what has been given to you. And so there is absolutely no pressure if you're new to the church family, or if you're, you know, not feeling absolutely no pressure, but it is a one way that we can, as a church community, uh, give back to God what he's given to us. So there's different ways you can do that. There's QR codes on the back of the seats, um, and there is an, a contactless point, which is at the back, oh, near where the tea and coffees are. Um, there's and giving buckets. online, and there's buckets. There's buckets. So, Brilliant. So let's do that now. And as we do that, let's take a break uh, before we hear from Gav.
Thank you. Oh, it's so good to do community, isn't it, and chat and, and everything. It's, it's all part of it. It's all great. Um, but we're here now just to welcome Gav. Gav, you'll... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you like everyone's mate. As I, I asked Gav, how would you like me to introduce you? And he just said, whatever. 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 So Gav's been with us since the start um, of the Werbs journey a few years ago. And he's a very faithful man. You've got you've, a physio by background, so yeah, I've yeah, learned. Yeah. I'm an occupational therapist, so we've got something in common. Um, but has also got um, experience in, in teaching and ministry in the church. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to pray for Gav now as he delivers the word, that it's not your words, as good as you are, that it is God's word working through Amen. you. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we just lift up Gav to you now. We thank you for the work that you've done in his life and the words that you have given us, him to speak to us this morning. Lord, we pray for your power the power of your name, the power of your Holy Spirit to work through Gav. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would settle on this congregation, Lord, and that we would hear what you need to say to us. Lord, we just pray that uh, your will would be done on earth just now. Give us what we need, Jesus. Mm. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sarah. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. It's really good to see you. Um, hi, if we've never met... Um, so good to see friendly faces and new faces to me as well. Uh, so welcome to friends online as well. Good to see you, whether you're live or catch up. Um, happy, is it too late to say Happy New Year? Yeah. No? Some? Yeah. Well, Happy New Year anyway. Um, it's my privilege to kick us off in our new series, as Phil said earlier, uh, which is called How It All Began. And as Sarah said, um, we're going to start at the beginning. It's a very good place to start. Shall we sing it? Yeah, somebody have heard, somebody have, have heard me sing. Um, so we're going to read the first book of the Bible, not all of it, which is Genesis, if you've never read it before. And obviously this morning we're going to start with Genesis chapter 1. Um, so we're reading Genesis 1-1 one, one, through to 2-4. It's quite a long one. Uh, I've opted to read it all because it tells the story. Um, so if you want to follow it uh, on your own device, please do that in your own hardback but hardback copy, or um, on the screens as well. So this is Genesis 1, 1 through to 2, 3. This is what we read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and, and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters, to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. Are you following it? Uh, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser to govern the night. He also made the stars. I love that bit. Lost it. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. 
And God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind, humanity, humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that all he had made God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, uh, sorry, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Wow, well done for listening to all of that. And you're all awake. Awesome. Goal number one, tick. Thank you. There's so much in this passage. Uh, And I went into chapter two because our chapter divisions are are man-made, if you like, and um, the account finishes at 2-3. So I, I felt like it was right to kind of finish it there, if you like. Uh, There's so much to say. Every word has a sermon in it, uh, or even a two-hour lecture. Um, So where do we start apart from the very beginning? Humor me for a minute. We're going to play a little game. I'm going to say the opening lines of a type of literature, and I would like you to guess, shout out, um, You don't have to put your hands up, just shout it um, when you think you know what literature it is you're listening to. Are you ready? Okay, first one. There's going to be five. Once upon a time, there was a fair maiden. Fairy tale. 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 What did you say, Phil? Story. Story. Yeah, Yeah, fairy tale. Great. So, fairy tale, who's it for? Children. Is it true? Yes, no, didn't happen. Uh, Sorry, I I might have just destroyed a few Disney fans here. (laughs) Okay, let's try another one. There was an Englishman, an Irishman, a Welshman, and a Scotsman on a train to London. Joke. Keep going, yes, yeah, I should. I should have built that in, but actually, I'd only end up offending someone, Tony. Yes. Um, Is that serious? No, it's fun, it's a joke. Third one. Dear Alex, how are you, my friend? Letter. Letter. Is it for you? Well, it is if your name's Alex. (laughs) And I deliberately chose that one. Anyway. Um, Fourth one. As I drove around the bend, the blue Ford Fiesta pulled out of the side road and crashed into the side of my car. (laughs) Insurance claim or witness statement. Did it happen? Probably. We might need a second witness to corroborate it. Gotcha. All right. Now, the last one. This is the hardest. And I'll give you a clue. You might need to be an English teacher to get this. Ready? So, Anna, I'm looking at you. This is pressure on you. Okay. 
Um, the sky is so blue, the sun is warm up there. I love the summer. Yes, haiku. Haiku is a Japanese form of poetry um, dictated by the fact that there are five, three lines only, five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. So it's easier if you see it written, you say, ah, that's haiku. Why am I doing this? Because I've just given you everyday examples of literature that in the text, in the, the content, there were clues that you picked up on without even thinking about that led you to interpret and understand what you were hearing. It helped you know how to apply it and what it related to and what it referred to. Its meaning in its application. And it's the same with the Bible. And in fact, it's really important that we know how to read um, the different types of writing that we get in the Bible. A posh word for that is genres. Or if we say it with a French accent, genres. So that we don't misunderstand it, misapply it, or even abuse it. So how do we read Genesis? Well, most of Genesis is what we call historical narrative. It's someone's account of something that happened to someone in a particular time and place. I say most of Genesis because it's not Genesis 1 to 3. And that's really important when we read Genesis, that we get that. 1 to 3 are completely different. There, there are two accounts of creation in Genesis 1 to 3. They are very different because their purposes are very different. Genesis 1 is the macro. Genesis 2 hones in on humanity. They don't contradict each other. They just got a different aim. So Genesis 1 through to 2-3 is also different within those three chapters, um, especially in the original Hebrew. So we see some amazing things. Now, some of you are going to get excited about this next two minutes. Others might go, oh my goodness, what world have we just disappeared into? Um, I apologize if you are the latter and you, or you'll fall asleep. But firstly, notice in a proper Bible, that Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 4 is indented by a tab. It's got an indent in it. Why? Because it's poetic. It has a poetic layout to express the type of literature that it is. Secondly, the description of the days, which is why I wanted you to hear the whole thing, uh, are very different, but also there's lots of similarities. So did you know that day one is paired with day four, two is paired with five, and three is paired with six? They mirror each other. There's a beautiful kind of mirroring going on there. Key words appear in that text. There was a, like a, a, a meter about it, wasn't there? There was a, a fluidity about it because things popped up again and again and again, and it was good, and it was so. Well, those words pop up in multiples of seven, exact mul multiples of seven. Why is that important? Because in ancient Hebrew, seven was the number of perfection, the number of divinity, God. And so there's a very unsubtle message going in there. Um, so here's some examples. So the word God appears exactly 35 times. Heaven appears exactly 21 times. Earth appears exactly 21 times. And it was so exactly seven times. God saw that it was good exactly seven times. And you can see that in the original Hebrew words. A bit like when you read Japanese haiku, you know it's haiku. You, you get the cue. There's so much more that uh, I would like to tell you about uh, the text here. But it would be, I'm not kidding, a two-hour lecture. We all want lunch, and most of you would fall asleep. So I'm trying to get across that this has been so beautifully crafted, every word carefully chosen. And to quote a paper you could uh, read on graspingthenettle.org, this strongly suggests that the narrator presents the creation week as an extended metaphor, which, like all metaphors, presents the... Uh, sorry, which, like all metaphors... I've lost my place. ...conveys more than what is said. I hope some of you are not panicking and thinking, oh, my goodness, uh, this is pulling out the rug 
of which I've been standing on for years. I really hope not, um, and that you can hear what God might be saying today. So, I do believe Genesis 1 is profoundly poetic and metaphorical. I don't think what I've just said nudges us or shouldn't nudge us into a debate of should I be be believing in a six-day creation? Surely God is capable of that. Uh, Because actually, push comes to shove, he could do it in six seconds if he wants. Do do you know what I mean? That's the God I believe in. Um, So I don't think we need to go down that because I think we'd be making the mistake of treating a theological text as if it were a science, a 21st century science textbook. It was never meant to be that. So it was never meant to be the science textbook. Let's read it as a theological text and get the message underneath. Galileo, 16th century father of astronomy, um, tries to reconcile his, he's a, he's a Christian, um, but he discovers that the earth is round, it's spinning and it's orbiting the sun and it did not go down well with the Catholic Church of the day. Um, And I don't mean that to diss the Catholics either, just that that was the dominant church. Um, And and in in trying to bring the two together, Galileo said that the Bible often means things which are quite different from what its bare words signify. Again, it comes back to understanding the context and the type of literature that we're reading, a bit like the once upon a time. How do I read this? So, this has all been so carefully, beautifully, and deliberately put together together word by word, for one purpose alone, to tell you that God created everything. Those multiples of seven, they shout, God, 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 over everything, from the most distant star. And as Mike said in in worship time, the stars, they are just so far away, and their light reaches us. It is incredible. Um... God made those, and God made the tiniest organism at the bottom of the ocean. God made it all. So our most first, most fundamental message that we get from Genesis, and thank you for bearing with me before to get here, is that you came from God. If you get nothing else today, please hear that, that you have come from God. So behind this wonderfully majestic, staggering universe, with this planet full of diverse life and incredible creatures, is a personal God who made it all. Not some distant power, but a personal God who made it all. We have our origin And that transforms our view of ourselves, doesn't it? Our own mental health and our view of other people. Genesis gives us our origin story. It roots us and being rooted will really help us in our mental health. So personal story, I had a normal upbringing, if you can call being near being a scouser normal. Um, I was an atheist. My mum would point out that we were brought up with Christian values, so I want to honor her in that. Uh, But I was an atheist. I was an evolutionary atheist, science A-levels, love um, astrophysics, did physics A-level. I have to say, wasn't very good. There are ministers, as in ministers of faith, who have PhDs in astrophysics and PhDs in divinity. I'm at the bachelor's level. Do you know what I mean? That, to be fair, and they weren't very good bachelors either. Um, but I, I have a science background. I love the stars and the universe um, and the natural world. Well, when I was 20, still an atheist, I had come back from Union New- Newcastle to my home in the Wirral. And I was walking along the beach from near a place called West Kirby, um, along where the Royal Liverpool Golf Course is. So little bits of us in in Liverpool like to pretend we're posh. So if we do, we say, Royal Liverpool Golf Golf Club, darling. Um, Anyway, it's a great golf course if you ever want to go. I'm walking along the beach. It's the edge of the D estuary. If you've ever known, it's a beautiful place. Golden sand of that bit. A bit further to the left, it's a bit muddy. But golden sand, 
tall green marram grasses in the sand dunes over here. There's an island in the middle of the estuary called Hilbury. Um, the Welsh hills are on my left, green and lush, uh, North Wales. Um, and the sky is just this brilliant blue. The sun is just beaming down this golden um, rays down. And the moon is still up, and it's, it's kind of beautiful and white and shiny. And I have a bit of an aha moment. I was an atheist when I started this walk that morning. In my physics studies, I knew that the moon was barren. There's no life on it. There's no trees. There's, no, there's, there's nothing there. And uh, it seemed in such stark contrast to the abundant life I saw around me. Something happened to me there and then. And I became a theist. I kind of, my thinking went, how can it all be here and it be so beautiful? And I'm here to appreciate it. There has to be a God behind it. So on that day, I became a theist. It was about a month later I actually became a Christian because I didn't know anything about Jesus. But at that moment, I became a, 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 a theist. I, I believed what I had never read in Genesis, that God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Really interestingly, later that day, my then girlfriend, now wife, many of you know her, Sally, phoned me on a landline, because it was that, a long, that long ago, to say, I was praying for you today, and I had a picture of you on the beach. Um, and uh, that really helped me kind of cement my faith, that flip, yeah, this is real. We're not here by accident. God has made everything. And that was the beginning of my journey of marrying my scientific upbringing and passion with my faith. And I've actually been to both ends of the, of the spectrum and learned to, to marry them. I believe they complement each other really well. Science uh, is equipped and, and good at answering the how. But faith answers and, and deals with the why in a way that science just cannot. And the Bible is not a science textbook, but a theological letter, a love letter, if you like, from God to his creation, revealing himself through over 40 different authors over two millennia in different languages and different cultures to different people with a different purpose. That's why we need to understand its message clearly. So you came from God. You were his idea. You're not an accident. You're precious. You were meant to be. Isn't that good news at the start of a new year in January when you've probably ditched all of your resolutions? Don't worry if you haven't or if you did. You came from God. And we have our origin story now. All of the, uh, not all, but many of the great film franchises, Star Wars and Marvel, they have their spin-off films, don't they, about the origin stories of their main character. You've got your origin story now. We can make a film about it. But it says that you're special. You are unique. You were meant to be. You were chosen. But it also says that every other human being is as well around us. Whatever label we might put on, what ethnicity, whatever background, we could say that Palestinians are as valuable and important as Israelis. We could choose whatever social... Um, kind of friction there is. So being a Scouser, I probably need that, to hear that Mancunians are as valuable as Liverpudlians. Any Mancunians in the house? God love you. Yeah, there you go. And vice versa. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it is, that our fellow human beings, whatever labels are put on them, they are as equally important as us. So you came from God. We have our origin. Point one, the next two are coming. Um, secondly, you have God's imprint in you. I think this is the most exciting part of Genesis 1 because we've had our origin. I think this gives us our identity and it really springboards us into a new way of living. You are made in God's image is the most popular way of saying it and the way the NIV translates it. And that's a good word to, to say it. But what does it mean to say that we're made in God's image? Uh, if I say image to you, you would probably think, digital screen, probably Insta, two-dimensional photograph, yeah? Or mirror, 
what's my image? You know, that, that sort of thing. Well, neither of those examples were available to ancient Hebrew culture. So uh, we want to be careful we don't read back in our culture into what we read. Um, the, the word comes from the verb to carve or to cut, and it's used in the Bible to describe sculptures and statues. So it's probably more 3D than 2D than we're used to thinking about the word image. I've heard people use the word imprint, and I like that too. But however we understand it, so that word image can be used for other things like shape, resemblance, figure, shadow. They're all trying to get to the same thing. You are made like God. You're not God. I'm not saying you're God. Hear me. But it does say you're made in his image, which is pretty phenomenal. Pretty phenomenal. So um, this imprint of you, of God, placed in you, isn't placed in other creatures, animals. That's not to say we don't value them, and we'll come to that a little bit later, briefly. Um, But his imprint is in you. You are like him, like his nature. So here's a thought. Your existence, your life, is good. I'm good at sign language. Good. Your life is good. Your existence is good. Because there's Godness about you. Wow. It sounds a bit heretical, but I'm only telling you what's there in Genesis 1. You are a bit like God. Um, and seven times, God, God says it was good in all of creation. Um, in, I love the message version, and at the end, the last one, the message translated as, and it was so good, so very good. That's messagey, isn't it? So good, so very good. You are not a mistake. You are not a bad apple. You are not the runt of the litter. You are not forgotten. You are not illegitimate. You bear the image of God. And if you've had those words spoken over you, I break them off you right now in Jesus' name. And I think there's at least two people here today who've been told you won't amount to anything. And I break that off you in Jesus' name too. Pray that God would restore his image in you and that you would see that too. Your life is good and you're made in his image. Secondly, part of this, point number two, you have his nature In other words, well, look at what God did. I mean, this is an incredible universe, isn't it? Uh, It's pretty big. Um, He's quite creative, isn't he? I mean, you take a rhinoceros and you take, I don't know, a killer whale, uh, and I'm rubbish at plants, a daffodil, a tulip, a centipede, a a bumblebee. (sighs) They were all his idea. So, and, and trees, I love trees. We could get into trees. Uh, just, just, he is so creative. And he's quite good at building things and creating order. Notice how they were all created according to their kind, and it was so. So, my goodness. So if we've got his nature, then that puts a whole new spin on how we view human things that we do. Creativity, art, Many of you are artistic and creative. Some of you will say, oh, I'm not artistic and creative. But I bet you are in some way. It's just not normally associated with you. Um, So sport, photography, gardening, farming, any form of artistry, music making, dancing, industries such as engineering, thought we'd say that in Derby because you've got to do it, Um, medicine, entrepreneurs, creating new things, beautiful things, inventors, all sorts of jobs and hobbies where we either create beauty, create new things, or or bring order to other things that are already made, we're doing something divinely inspired. inspired. Now, the Victorian era that um, does kind of impact our today culture, even though it's 100 years ago, but the Victorian era and the Puritans, which is a a movement movement of grumpy Christians, That is possibly uh, an oversimplification. But, you know, in that era, you weren't allowed to dance. You were not allowed to dance. 
I mean, you know, and food should be bland. You know, basically, don't look happy. Well, do you see that in the Bible? I don't. And I think this text is absolutely phenomenal for helping us to see ordinary stuff as divinely inspired and for us to celebrate and lead the world in showing how it could be done. So um, this may affirm you this morning in a way you've never been affirmed before. Maybe because the church hasn't affirmed you if you're not a vicar, if you know what I mean. But actually, there are millions. I couldn't list all the things that are so divinely inspired because we're made in his image. And I pray you'd hear the Holy Spirit this morning affirming you in what he's already called you and gifted you to do. So listen to him today. And thirdly, on this middle point, women are made in God's image too. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. From more than 50% of the room. Yes, absolutely. Guys, God is not a bloke. I know we call him father and Jesus was born as a male. Of course he was. It was a patristic, patriarchal society, so that was how God was going to reveal himself. But I don't believe he has gender. And it says... In the image of God, he created them, male and female, together. We all represent God's image. No one's disbarred. But I do feel there's something powerful this morning and prophetic uh, for, the, for women here this morning. Because I certainly think some of you have been told as a woman, you can't represent God. Well, hey, you bear the image of God. Whoa, that's pretty awesome. So you can do that too. And I, I, I pray you can hear that. And I pray there'll be healing uh, if you've been hurt in, the, in that realm um, already. Um, and we'd find freedom in that too. So you were made by God. This is our origin story. You were made in his image. This is your identity. And thirdly and finally, you were made to rule the earth, our purpose and our responsibility. We are made boss of the earth. We are in charge of the planet, the universe. It's interesting if we look. So we're made to harness creation's potential, to create beauty and bring order out of it. That's pretty phenomenal too. So let's look at what we're told. Well, firstly, it says fill the earth which is a sort of corporate responsibility for reproduction. Don't feel it on an individual level. Um, and uh, it's where we would begin a theology of sex. We haven't got time for that um, today. Another one, ask Phil. No. <laughs> um, secondly, we're told, subdue the earth. And that, this, that's, this is a challenging one. That means to overcome it. Well, I've never really thought much about that before. But that's pretty tough, isn't it? Bring it under control. Well, I've been kind of brought up and conditioned to kind of tut at humanity's attempts to control nature. Genesis 1, you and I, corporately, subdue the earth, control it, look after it. Secondly, or thirdly, rule over it. Um, which does mean just that, control or dominion of, um, which, again, is a challenge. Harness creation's potential, create beauty and order out of it. I think it's clear that we have to look after it and steward it well, to master it, to care for it. And I think in the last decade, much of the Western world is waking up to the fact that our kind of lifestyle is, is destroying the planet. And instead of creating species, we're killing them off at a fast rate. So... Um, I think we're waking up to that, aren't we? Um, I think I was influenced, I became a Christian in the end of the night, sorry, the beginning of the 90s. Um, and so 20th century Christianity, um, at that time, was very much not listening to the ecological movement. It is now, and I'm very delighted about that, because quite clearly, we're to look after this creation. I also see a green light here for scientific investigation, uh, for exploration of the whole universe in some way that I don't quite understand, taming it, and definitely being responsible for it, definitely caring for it, preserving it, and continuing to bring life, not remove it. So, we're going to come into land. Uh, maybe the band would like to uh, come back up and begin leading us. They do a great job every week. Thank you, guys. 
Hopefully, we've learned a bit about how to read the first chapter of the Bible. We found our origins, you were made by God. We found our identity, you were made in God's image. And we found our purpose, you were made to rule the earth. And God saw that it was good, so very good. The world is amazing. We may have made a mess of things, but we can still put that right. There's huge hope and potential and that responsibility that we've now got to do something about it. And God blessed it, it said. And God blesses us. And that's not a small statement either. He blesses you today. It's pretty awesome, really. We've seen that this can radically change our um, inherited assumptions about self-worth and significance, about our hobbies and our vocations. What are the tape, what are the messages, the voice memos playing in your head? What are the internal head thoughts that go on all the time that really don't match? You were made by God, you have his imprint. What are those things? Shall we erase them today and put these in? I'm made by God. I have God's imprint. I'm commissioned to do something meaningful. Pretty good. May you walk and live each day knowing and showing God's imprint in your life. I feel like there's a whole host of prophetic things to be said to you this morning, like go, create, build, bring order, count, do logistics, write, dance, sing, walk, climb, run, explore, solve, rebuild, If those words hit home, celebrate it and follow God. I also think there's a fair amount of healing to be done in the area this morning too. So please, if any of the things we've said this morning have hit home, then we'd love you to come and get some prayer this morning. So shall we stand? We'll make our response. The guys will start praying. Um, basically, there's a couple of options. Um, if you'd like some prayer, please just right now, just start and come and stand in this area at the front. Our prayer ministry will come and pray for you. And as you come down, just uh, close your eyes, open your hands, give yourself to God and invite him to come and do what he wants to do this morning. Secondly, if that's not you this morning, then uh, engage with, with God yourself, pray, worship, and pray for what we do down here. Um, so come out if you're able to. Prayer ministry team, if you'd like to come down, that'd be great. Last week, we had a number of people come forward when we, uh, at this moment, and we invited people to come forward who wanted more of Jesus in their lives this year. And this is part of it. This is the start of that journey to kind of write in our heads our identity, understanding who we are, and that sense of what God is calling us to be and to do. So if that's you this morning, if you want to change, as Gav said, that kind of head talk, the internal head talk, where it's not quite right, where different things have been spoken over you, actually, this is a moment. We just want to bless you and pray for you. So let's be bold. Let's take steps. Let's step into all that we have for God. There's nothing special about this space other than it's just here and it's available. Yeah, and God down. wants to meet with us. So come forward and let us pray for you as we continue to worship Jesus now. And don't be afraid. Just come on down. Do some business today. Um, some words that may or may not be from God. I think when Mike was leading us, uh, all the band, um, there was a line... Uh, that said, you are more than you've become. And it, it really hit me. So maybe that's for me. But I also thought that sums up what we're talking about this morning. You are more than what you've become. If that strikes you, we'd love to pray for you too. There are a few words that have been spoken about you that I think you might have taken on board. So I'm going to read a couple of those. Worthless and useless. If that just brings back a memory to you now, Let's pray healing over that. We also had a picture of someone being beaten up as a teenager. And if that happened to you, we'd love to pray for healing uh, for that. Had a picture of uh, a lady discovering a pearl on a beautiful beach. Absolutely beautiful beach. 
just finding a pearl in the shallows. There's a beautiful pearl. You are the pearl. You are the pearl. Inside the pearl, when you pick it up, bits of paper with words on start to fall out. I don't know, it's, it's a picture. I know pearls don't have a piece of paper in, but it's just a picture, isn't it? The words just fall out, and on those words are death, early death, misfit, and lonely. So if they strike to you, come and get some prayer. Yeah, let's pray. Let's worship. Got a couple more, is that right, Phil? A couple more. Um, I've seen a picture of a, a huge sequoia and uh, at various levels up through the tree, uh, there are lots of people, climbers, having life and fun in the tree. God wants you to be a mighty oak, to have lots of life around you, lots of people with you. Someone had a word earlier before we started that someone needs to make a decision this morning. You need to decide. And we don't quite know what that is, but if you've been thinking about that, then come out, pray. Two more words to erase from you. Illegitimate and hypochondriac. So if they strike to you, we'd love to pray God's cleansing, healing over you. Thanks for bearing with us. Let's worship.
And if the cross brings transformation, then I'll be crucified with you. Because death is just the doorway into resurrection and life. And if I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing. My song will be the same. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. Oh, let his praise arise. Christ be So, Father God, we thank you for being here, present with us this morning. We thank you for affirming us that we are yours, that you have created the universe and everything in it. And because of that, we can find our identity. And so, Lord, will you affirm us? Will you bless us? In particular, Lord, we want to pray for those who are the creatives, those who are the engineers, the inventors, the scientists, those who bring order out of chaos. Lord, may we know that we are stepping into what you have for us and what you've called us to do. So bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and send us from here to be a blessing to represent you, to carry your image into the world, wherever we go. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church, have a great week. Um, yeah, have a great week, whatever it holds. Have a great one.